A. G'day, how you going? Ian Apolos here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to me live painting video today. I'm going to do a live painting and before I do, I just need to get some tabs open so I can see if there's any comments I need to address throughout this live painting. Uh, it's going to be, I'll show you in a minute, just let me set up here. Well, what's it? Don't install updates. I don't need them up right now, do I? I want to go live now. Here we go. Okay, so where are we? I'm on that screen there. Uh, we want YouTube. I've got two screens here, so I've got a bigger one so I can see. I've got a bigger screen because the screen on my laptop's a bit dotty and small, isn't it? All right, here we are. There we go. So let me click on that and make sure that the volume's turned down, otherwise we'll get some chronic feedback. Okay, uh, let me just mute it before I play it. Mute, beautiful. And then I'm gonna press play. Oh, look at the legs on the man. Right, let's get all the way to there. Who we got? Karen Myers and Marilyn Lynch. Get a Trish. Anthony, Barbara, Celeste, how are we all doing? Gonna do a nice, I'm gonna show you in a minute, but I'm just setting up here. That's all I need to do, I think, because if you're watching the replay, the links are already there in the description below, but if you're in the live feed, um, they're not there yet, they'll be done when I finish. Now, come over here and I'll give you an idea uh, what I've designed. It's a bit of um, what goes through my mind, it's a bit of, paintings that I've done in the past and facets that I liked about them and I'm going to incorporate them into this one painting and hopefully it'll work. I should have really dabbled with some colours to see if they're going to suit each other but I'm going to wing it and just see how we go and it's on a um, half size canvas panel here. The, the size of the canvas panel and the colours I'm using are in the description below as well, check them out. All right, and what do we got here? We got Sandra, hello, all the way from Maryland. Jackie, Craig Bailey, g'day Craig from UK. Yeah, you go and watch later on, all good. Uh, good to see you here. Is from Pat Mann. All right, I'm gonna bring you over here now, but before I do, I'll just get a few things on my palette first, just so as I don't have to frig dig around later on, and I wanna grab some colors of paint from my little board there. I need good old Indian yellow, quinacridone magenta. I do have a, um, what do you call it? Where is it? Doxine purple, where's that? Is it up here? Yes, it is there. It is up there as well. Um, Dioxine purple and a bit of phalo blue. So that's over here as well. There we go there. And we need a knife to pull that out. And we're gonna need a good toothbrush. All right. Waiting. How you going, mate, says Brian Fagan. G'day, Brian Fagan, I'm not too bad, eh? I tell you what, I bought iced tea. I better grab it, two seconds, because I wanted a drink. And I thought I'll have some iced tea, so I just need a bit of a drink before we get going and then I will be right. How's everyone coping with this isolation, self-isolating and all that? Everyone's going live and trying to keep everybody occupied and entertained, which is a good thing I think. Hey, we've got the, the time and the facilities to do it, why not? Okay. I'm going to bring you over here. Okay, well first I'll just show you what I've laid out in my mind. We've got like the massive marvellous moon. We're going to have a beautiful gradient sky. You're going to see that as the painting happens, okay? Uh, we've got some cliff, rocks, water, lake and a palm tree. All right, I'll just put that somewhere there and now down here we have 
some craft paint. A lot of people ask, what is this? My canvas panel is already gesso primed. If it isn't, it doesn't matter, but if it is, it doesn't matter either. I still do this. So I've got my craft paint. All right, I'm gonna grab some craft paint. Enough there. And retarder. People who don't know what retarder is, it's just a medium that'll slow down the drying time of acrylic paint. I call that flow paint because it's a softer body than the um, stuff you get from the tube. And it's poster paint, student paint, whatever. And we want some retarder in there. And then I'm gonna use my simple, effective putter on a brush. Look at that, from the hardware store. And I can mix all this up like a happy chap. And we'll get all this mixed together. And this is gonna allow that canvas where I put this, I don't want it on all of it, this is gonna allow all that canvas area to blend like oils, and it's gonna make it look bloody great. All right, Donna, hello Donna, hello Roseanne, oh, Roxanne. I had to set my remote. Okay. Um, okay, let's go. Let's make sure I don't forget to move the camera as well, otherwise people will be grievously disappointed with me. All right, so you can see I don't need this retarded paint where all the rocks are going to be, so I'm going to get that on there and jostle it in there like that, roughly where my mountain's going to be. Okay. Get it off the edge there. Okay. I don't want a hard line there, so I'm just brushing it now. Now I'm just stroking that left and right so it's nicely massaged in and even. All right, now what do I do? What do I do? I will just wipe this brush. I'm just going to get the bulk of it off, just on a rag there. Dirty old, this rag's getting hard. Needs to be replaced soon. Okay, let's grab the next colours um, we want. Now, if you don't have these colours, use something similar and see how you go with this painting and then you can adjust accordingly to what colours I use, what you use or what you want to use, okay? It's pretty simple. So I've got Indian yellow, quinacridone magenta. I've got cerulean blue. As you'll notice, from the bottom of the canvas, it's going to go up to the top. And uh, then we've got some uh, phthalo blue right there, like that. And. Dioxine purple. Well, it's really dioxine purple. I'll cut me corners when I get some of that there. There we go. That's just going to add some dark elements in the sky. So they're the colours that's going to go up the canvas. That's why I laid them that way. And I thought I'll let you know that as well so you know what's going on in my mind. So we're going to pick up the yellow. Indian yellow is so bright. But we only need a little bit of this. Less is best for this bit here. Hello from Ontario, Canada. Finally caught you live, good stuff. And that's from Sandra Borcher. Sandra, Denise, hello Denise and Carol. Hello Carol. Hoping to watch Ian Paint would bring normality back. Love this work and insight, good stuff, thank you. All right, let's get into it, eh? Now what you're painting, don't try and make it look like exactly the way the tutorialist has showed you. Just learn from it, watch it a few times and do it your way. I only want a little bit of yellow there, so I'm only going to put a little bit there. Ding, dang, dong, there we go. Not much, eh? It wasn't too much. There we go, and I'm just airing the edge off up there so it's not a hard edge. Now I'm going to wipe that brush again on my crusty rag there. Well, it's not a rag, it was a tea towel. Now I love this magenta, really love it. I'm going to get that on there. Get some of that on your brush. See, I'm loading it right on the tip there because I know I'm going to forcefully put that tip onto my canvas when I paint. Now I want this right there as well. I'm going to come into that yellow a bit as well, just to shrink in that, there we go. And then get this 
up there because this is just the sun setting. Easy does it. Now I'm going to wipe that so as it doesn't contaminate too much. I'm just wiping it on that tea towel again. Okay, and I want to use the tip of this brush to merge that. There we go, there we go, there we go. It all happened greatly. Now I'm going to get the top of that magenta and bring up a bit. Beautiful. This is going to be a night sky, believe it or not, but we get these sort of evening skies here in Australia. Don't know if you do, where you are. Now we're going to go for the cerulean blue, the real blue. I call this the real blue because it looks like a real blue colour in the sky. Now we'll get this here into that magenta. There we go. Wipe that brush again and then merge that into that magenta there. So you're getting that kind of look of the transition of the two colours. Well, not the look, but that behaviour. I better... That's how I cut my glove before. I was wondering how I kept opening up the thumbs of my gloves. And it's because I was rubbing them down the edge of the painting there. Okay, let's get this done. I've got the perfect amount that I wanted of these three colours transitioned together, okay? Now I'm going to pick up the phalo blue. It's a bit more of a darker blue than that cerulean. We're going into the night time, you know, bring the cats in, put the kettle on, cup of tea time, night time part of the sky. So we've got that and this is going to, let's crisscross it into that blue a bit, down a bit, because we don't want to make like a rainbow band. We want to have some artistic features there. And then just bring it into your sky. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go all the way up to the top. So when I add the dioxine purple, it's not going to be like a light violet. It's going to sit onto this colour as well. That's why I brought it all the way up to the top. Okay. Now I'm just going to wipe that brush again. I'm hoping this is going to work out. I've got that feeling that it's going okay. I better not speak too soon, though. Now I'm going to pull that, beautiful, get this nice, there we go. Now we're going to pick up the darker colour, dioxine purple. Get that on the brush, the same way I've loaded up all those other colours. I'm from Parish, Louisiana, says Cynthia, g'day Cynthia Snow. One of my auntie's name was Cynthia. Now the top, get it at the top and just start crisscrossing it to break it into that phalo blue. So the top's nice and dark. Oh, there we go. And now I just want to brush stroke that to get some beautiful elements there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now we're just about finished. I'm going to pull all that away from there. Get that over there. Just about finished. The sky. We need some titanium white because where that moon's going to go, we're going to need a bit of a glare. All right. So I'm just going to probably wash this brush in my tub. I've got a couple of tubs here. I wash some, then I rinse them so we're not using the same muddy water. <coughs> All right, so I'll have a look at some questions in a minute if there's any there or comments, say hello, whatever. I'm just getting some white, not too much of this. Karen, g'day Karen, how are you? Karen, oh, stop pulling. I've got shoes on. I don't normally wear shoes, but what I find when I wear shoes, they grab everything. Now I'm going to have me moon here. So um, we'll get a bit of a, a glare happening there where I'm going to have me moon all across the sky because I'm going to have that palm tree there as well. 
So it's just lighting up that area, that band. That's That'll do. It's subtle. What this is doing, you might not know. You might think, well, I wouldn't have bothered with that, Ian, but what that I've just done there is going to do, it's going to make it look like the moon is floating and there's space behind it, all right? Now, before everything dries, we've got to come over here and get some brushes. Where I want a small fan brush and I want a... Uh, Where's my other ones? I'll grab a... They're hog bristle fan brushes that I use. Over here. We're going to grab that white and um, get some... I can use a small one for now. I'm not going to need that big one just yet. I want to get some clouds, just element in the sky there. All right. What have we got? 76 people watching. G'day everyone. How you all going? Now, here's the bottom. I want depth and distance right there. So how I feel to get that, I'm going to start from about the middle and just put my little clouds all the way along there. Boom, bidi, boom. Too easy, that one was. And another one probably just to jar off it, scattered a bit. I'll get some paint on that brush. There we go. And I'm just going to use this brush as well, just to probably fade the bottom down a bit. There we go. Now I'll pick up some more and put something a bit bigger up. Not too big though. I don't want to steal the stuff from the moon. So we're going to get something here. Just dance it on. Concentrate on the top. Dance it on. Dance it on. It's picking up those colours. I always like to... Bear this away to nothing. Try not to have a cloud coming off the painting downwards. It just doesn't look right, in my opinion. So I might even, let's just try. I'm going to wipe that brush just on my towel. I've just wiped it. We could probably even use this brush just to get a bit of blending going there, a bit of turmoil. Oh, you could, yeah. Not really a fan of it, though. I prefer... Let's get a smaller one here, something like this. Okay, turmoiling, I'm twisting it. Look at it does, it just adds that element of yum in your cloud. And I want to get this point probably out here. There we go. There we go. That's it, plenty. Don't overdo it. Sometimes you can overdo a painting. We're all guilty of that. Um, let's just put a little bit of yumminess there, what I like to... Give to my clouds just to add a little bit of thickness and dimension. Let's see if we've got enough of that white left. Just to create the brightness and then gently sit that brightness down. Hang on, we were close enough. Leaving that brightness there, but just twisting it into that turmoil as well. And it's added a bit more lumps, bumps and corners within your cloud. There we go, that'll do. Just as long as they don't look like little dots there. Happy with that? Oh, I'm happy with that. Cool. Now let's hope I don't fall over again and hurt me hip. <clears throat> Last live I had a big accident, eh? I'm just going to go over here. Well, over there. Get up there, you. Where are we? There we go. I'm just going to wash this brush. Was there any other ones I needed to wash? I'll just wash that. Because if I leave these, they're going to be in my way. So just bear with me a moment. Okay. Back over here. Tell you what, my my um, camera pole is getting a bit stiff, jammy to pull around. All right, where are we up to? Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, before we finish, we need the stars. So let's grab a few stars. Now, Greg, we've, when you're loading up a toothbrush for stars, I use a toothbrush. A lot of people use different things. A big howdy from Dallas. G'day. Yeah, what is it? 
Kiki. G'day Kiki. And Carol, Paws and Ian. Ian's paintings are so beautiful and soothing to watch. Thank you very much there, Carol. And Judy, um, oh boy, just in time for clouds. Yeah, the clouds are done. Now I'm gonna, with a brush, a toothbrush, if you're loading a toothbrush up for stars, you want the, the flow white works great, and you want just the tip of the brush loaded. You don't want it all in the hairs because it clogs it up and puts the brakes on and it makes it hard for the stars to be flicked out. Now we just want a couple within the sky, so let's do a... Yeah, see that paint is not wet enough, so I've got to just squirt it a bit. I'll wipe it on the rag and I'll just reload that paint again. Okay, now we'll We'll get a few. Oh, and you want your finger nice and tight. That's better. <sighs> Some stars in the sky. Just up the top area where the dark area is. And I want a concentrated dark band right here where my moon's going to cover it up. See how easy they come off, those stars? That's it. All over Red Rover. Now we've got to dry that. So I'll pull you back a bit while I dry that. Um, where are we? And I'll um, just dry this. Uh, why I'm drying it is I've got to put the template on there for the stencil. Okay, so we'll just get this dried. What have we got there? Denise, hello Denise and Judy. We'll get that camera a bit more. So I'm not cutting everything out. So I need this dry now so as our template won't stick to all that wet paint. Twenty one minutes ago. Hmm. While I'm doing that, I want to keep these paint moist. Now that part there was quite easy if you just practice those procedures, that was quite easy. It wasn't difficult at all. Just remember all my tutorials, you can do them. It might take more practice and time, but at the end of the day, you can do them. Some people look at some people's art and think, wow, I can never do that. But you can. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna whack that aircon on a bit because it's a little bit humid in here now. So I just need some lovely air carrying on. Um, something went missing there, where did it all go? How long have we been going for? Let's see. Oh, check out my merchandise below the video there. You can click on any item and it'll take you to the store and you can just see what's available, different colours, different sizes. Check them out, okay? A lot of people ask for merchandise, so it is there now. So I just thought I'll let you know there's merchandise there. Um, okay, I've got my template. Get some plastic, some paper, even paper's good on its own, it's just disposable. And get your round object and get a box cutter and that, that's how I make mine so round and so perfect. It's just laminated paper actually. And I've got a lot of different sizes. I want to use this size today on this moon here. So let's hope that's reasonably dry. It can do with a little bit more. Where I'm going to put the tape, if I don't want it to move, Once the, um, the template's on there, that's it. No more buggering around with it, just get it sorted. So I want it to the right side of this painting a bit. So we'll probably go maybe there, said the bear. Good stuff. 
perfect. Now, I'll, while you're still back there, you can use pouncers for this and govern the paint around the stencil cut out with a pouncer or use some household sponges. And this is a procedure in itself. Just get a, make yourself a cutout, get a hard surface and try laying out different colours and making moons, different shadows and that. I, I, I did that quite a lot. Now, I want, I'll get you back over here. Very noisy wheels, eh? <laughs> now, what colour do I want first? I want a bit of, um, first I'll just wet the sponge, because just a damp sponge is quite good to use. Now, this moon's going to have a bit of a bright side and a dark side, so I want to grab the dioxine purple and mix it with just the leftover of that cerulean, all right? And maybe a little bit of, what is it? Dioxine purple there. Phalo blue I'm grabbing, sorry. Can't remember what I said now. South Carolina, g'day. Lola. Janet Perry, g'day. All the way from Everston, Wyoming. All right, let's make a moon. So what I like to do, um, Let's just get all this stamped on. Primering in the moon, whatever your first coat is, that's your primer. All right. We've got our dark side there. Quite easy. Now I'm going to pick up some of the dioxine purple on its own. And I want to create a darker side. Now if you sort of give your moon the same flavour of your sky colours, whether it's an orangey sky, it sort of just helps the colour layout so greatly. I'm going to get that edge a bit better there. I'm holding the template as well. See now, hopefully you can see that. It's not a direct line. I wanted it sort of, I did want it kind of um, faded a bit. Now I want to grab some of the Uh, phalo blue now on that sponge and I'm going to pick up some of the white. So we're picking this colour now. Get enough white to get it the flavour you want. All around the edge of your sponge there. And we're going to do the bright half of the moon. Alright. So let me just Grab that there. Now this is sort of a whitey blue colour, which is fine. And we want to kind of um, get it towards that darker colour there. Oh, not too much, Ian. Control your sponge, that's why I say practice these things. Now I'm going to get my finger and hopefully, yeah, there we go. We can manipulate stuff there. Just mucking around lightly does it that's good enough you watch when i pull this um template off it just gives you that bullshit effect in your moon it's like wow it was quite easy okay that's done now we're going to finish it off so how do you finish it off Ian? i'm just going to use the good titanium white okay a little bit there and um Dampen the palette a bit. Are we down the bottom there yet? Dampen that sponge and just load up the sponge where you want to affect the moon. That's why I say practice these. Every time I do a moon, they're so many different ways, but if you keep to one principle, you can't go wrong. Now let's see what this does, just to the, the bright half, the very edge. Now, if you feel it's mudding up a bit, which I feel, I'm just going to quickly dry that. Oh, I sh this is cold air, because if you've got hot air, it'll melt your plastic. <laughs> and how do I know that? Because I've done it before. That'll do. Just enough to tack it. Get some more white on there, because that was just contaminating the white too much. 
I want a nice bright half of the moon. There we go. <clears throat> Get a bit more. Maybe we can do something like this as well. There. Oh. That's it. And learn to stop with that. Okay, let's pull the um, template off and you'll just see what I mean. We've got quite a nice, good floating moon in the sky, okay? Now I've just got to wash this template again. Otherwise, it'll go hard on me. So I've got to wash it straight away. Oh, get those out of me. I'm just quickly washing that sponge as well because it's full of paint. The worst, worst thing you want is your sponge to have all hard paint in it a couple of hours after you've finished doing your work. There we go. <laughs> washing that, it put a, I don't know if you can see that, but it put a nice moon in me um, towel there, but anyway. <laughs> oh, I just remembered I've got some iced tea over there. Right, I don't need that for close ups anymore. Where are we? Here we go. Let's get under this. How long have we been going for? 30, half an hour. We'll try and get this done in an hour. All right, everything's dry. Put those glasses back up there. We want a darker colour, so I'm going to grab just black. Good old black. Oh, I'm going to use good old um, black gesso. It's like uh, blackboard paint. I'm going to use just a good old flat brush as well. And I better grab my glasses for this detail here. Gorgeous, crazy man. Uh, hey, uh, so we've got Papirio, Carol and Celeste. Francis, hello Francis and Lynn. Lynn, g'day Lynn, Roxanne. Cool air, hot makes paint lifts, says another artist. I don't know, I've never had any paint lifting. I always, nine times out of ten, dry with hot air, but each to their own. Now, where's me thing? Are you on the painting? Yes, you are. I better put it properly there. There we go. Now, we've got a... Um, thinking, thinking, I can probably do the whole lot this colour. So I want to start off the painting and I want to get, keep some of those little clouds there. I'll turn the brush around. Quite easy, get that edge nice and hard, this edge here. Okay, then we'll just block this in with the black gesso. This black gesso is pretty much, like I said, it's it's flat black, so it looks like a, those of you that know it, it's like a chalkboard. Now this might look a bit weird at the moment, don't worry about that. How am I going to do that water? Now we need to get the brush strokes out of that nice and neatly. There we go. And of course we've got to blow dry that. You know what I might do? Just to, I'm just going to do the whole lot because I feel I might need to and I can bring that to where I want it as it's happening. Okay, so let's get the strokes out of that nicely. And we've got to give that a bit of a dry as well. Because you want that nice and dry when you're doing the, the rest of it. Put that brush in the water there. G'day Denise, how are you? Mm. 
Now, I've got to dry that. Just so as we can um, get other colours on there. Alrighty, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Now, we're going to have a bit of a, an undercarriage here with this as well. Uh, let's get the moon, not the moon. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to get out the way there, you. I've got to grab some paint there. I want a dark burn umber. Here we go, all the way over there. Bit of a dark burn umber and a bit of a um, yellow oxide. Ye yellow oxide, there we go. Nothing more, nothing less. Bit of yellow oxide there. If you're watching the replay, give us a thumbs up and just message me in the comments below if there's something you might have missed. Okay, we want a bit of a, a brush. Where are we? <laughs> now, I've got some burnt umber there. Let me get this a bit tighter. Got some burnt umber there. I've just got another flat brush. And what I want to do is I better grab some white as well. <laughs> I'm just going to use the craft white. Hopefully that'll lighten it up enough for what I want. And let's grab a little bit over here. There we go. We'll just turn the headlights on in that. Just enough to sit on top of that black. You want to try and make your rocks not too bright, otherwise something's not right with them. All right, now we've got our rocks there. So underneath it, it's about here. So I'll get that underneath bit, just jingle and jangle the edge along like this. this is, I did I'd like a waterfall like this a while back. So this is where I'm sort of getting this idea from. And I'm kind of um, slathering it up into that rock face there. Um, slathering means something that Ian's doing with a paintbrush on a canvas. That's what the word slathering means. He's slathering his brush around. <laughs> I don't know, I just make up words as I go. Okay, now we've got the bottom half of that cliff. Pretty easy, wasn't it? Now we'll get some top bits, just sort of, if anything, there, if anything, you can see what I'm doing. They're coming from the edge and, you know, no thinking about it, just wherever and bring it into that there. Now the, all the paint has worn off my brush, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. And now I'm scrumbling just bits and pieces here and there. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna call this. Some sort of waterfall moon sort of thing. How's that looking in the thing? Not too bad. Now I wanna scrumble the bottom half of this line as well get it like it's going back inside that cave there so i'm just hurting that so it looks quite artistic all right now it's happening now we need the um i'm just going to wash that brush we need the yellow ochre yellow ochre yellow ochre sorry i'm going to wash that brush and then rinse it and I want a little bit of, um, where are we? Little bit of white paint with that one as well, just to see what it's gonna do. There we go, not too much white. And you wanna hit some of that rock there. Now this is an artistic painting, it's not a real life photo, so any detail police out there that wanna get on my back and say, oh, this, that, and the other's wrong with it, Go and ride your pony and look at someone else that does realistic work and pick on them, all right? That's all I can say. Uh, now, we easily does it. The light's hitting there as well. Easily does it. We've got rock. Not too much of this, not too much. This is just pretty much making up the colours of the rock. All these three different colours there. And I'm getting the 
bottom edge done as well. Hope my head's not in the way in that. There we go. Now I'm just going to wipe that off and try and scrumble some of those hard edges down. I'm not even thinking with this, I'm just hoping for the best. And normally when you hope for the best, things work out. I not hope for the best, but just, you know, go wild with your artistic flair. That's looking cool. Anything there I need to do? Great minds. Okay. Now I'm just going to look in there just to see if it's too bright, not too bad. I want to get the brightest of that yellow ochre with some white and just maybe hit some brighter areas, but not too much, just maybe where that moon is hitting some of the bright areas. And then we can tone it back with some darker bits if we need to, okay? Wipe that brush. Okay, now I'm going to pick up the darker colour again. And where are we? Where did it go? Where did it go? Here it is. And just look for... ...darker areas, because the darks, if you lose all of them, something's not quite right, and when you put them back, you realise that's what it was. What I'm doing here is I'm pretty much deliberately darking up some of the areas where the water's going to be. Now we don't want to do the water yet because, the waterfall yet because we've got to do the water down below. That'll do it. Just kill some of those really bright bits. That's looking okay, I, I feel. Okay, where are we? Francis, uh, maybe that should be titled, be the title, Down to Earth Attitude. <laughs> yeah, I love the distance you're getting. Often struggle with getting distance, says Julie. Uh, Mary, yes, Ian, great style and make it look easy. Okay, that'll do. Now we want some water there. I'm going to get a smaller brush. Uh, I do have a smaller fill, but here we go. Now, I want to create the water here, which is about there, uh, where we've got dark, so we're going to grab some of this. Get down there so you know what I'm doing. We've got the burn umber again with some white, okay? We want to create some rocks on that black. Now, this might not look like it'll stand out, but it should. Now sometimes these can be a bit um, buggery and hard. We want to kind of there. So just don't worry how messy they look at the moment. This is just getting the actual shadow of it all in. Where are we? My head's not in the way of it. Dance it out into the water area where it's going to come. Because this is all underneath. There's a rock shelf underneath this waterfall cliff here. You've seen me do this in a different type of painting before. The way I've gone live today is I've got nothing in my files ready to upload. I've been busy with normal everyday issues and haven't had anything filmed so at least this way it gets filmed and <laughs> edited and uploaded all at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is the front area here I'm going to start fading it into us here, like that. There we go, because these are going to sort of go down into the water. But back in the distance there. There we go. Now what you need to do, so we don't get any mudding up happening, I've got to quickly dry that. It looks a bit pale, don't worry about that. We're going to put the actual colour on those rocks. Mm. 
Yeah, you're right there, Mary Kales. It's a lot better than watching TV. Sometimes TV can be so repetitive about what's going on. Now I'm going to grab the same brush again and the colour of those rocks we're going to use is the, oh man, uh, yellow ochre. I better slow down, I just got dizzy then. Got dizzy this morning when I got out of bed. Now we want a little little bits in the back there, just little ones. Very little, little ones here and there. Leave a lot of that dark in there. Little dots. And then you can start mapping in the bigger ones, okay? Now you don't have to add these if you want, you might want to just leave the flavour the way it was. Alright, now I'm just going to grab the white within that. Uh, we want the good titanium white for this because it's got more body to it. Now just a little bit, just a little bit. Can you see my palette down there? Yes. Grab some of the, I'll wipe that. Grab some of the yellow ochre and get some white in there. Just marbly looking, doesn't have to be fully mixed. And just highlight some of those rocks. Not all of them, just some of them. Here we go. So we just want to highlight some of these now. I'm going to mainly do a middle section of them. <laughs> and work out when it's time to stop. Yeah, they're looking all right. They look like rocks. And what I might do is just grab a little bit stronger white value. And just right in the middle here. That'll do it. That'll do. Now we've got to get the water done. Where's the flat brush? Here we go. Now for the water, I'm going to grab some of this white. It's the craft white. It's dark water and we've got deoxine purple. A bit of uh, burn umber mixed within that white. And we're going to put out water. Just sharpen your brush up. Leave some of the darks in there. That's it. Plenty. Now I'm going to draw it. So as we can add the glaze.
Denise, how big is my moon template? I've got all different sizes from coffee cups and plates. I just make any size randomly. All right, where's my glaze? I've got some glaze here. Get some glaze on there like that. Uh, that water paint that you had, mix that in the glaze. Whoa. And then lightly come over just the foreground of your rocks there. And that's just sunken them under water, okay? That's it. No more to it. That's it, leave it alone. Now we want a good flat brush and um, some more titanium white. So while you're looking at the painting there, I'm just going to grab some on the um, palette there. And where is it? Here, I want a small brush about this small, just a small flat. And I'll give that a bit of a dry. I glazed it. And we're going to grab some titanium white out of the tube onto a small flat. What type of glaze am I using? I'm using a Tilia. It's just a gloss glaze. Go to your art store and get a glaze. It pretty much makes your paint transparent type. Now we're grabbing some white on here. And let's work out where we want a waterfall. I want one about, where are we? I want it to come about here. So we're pretty much going to have one. Coming down, just in white. And I might put a skinnier one about here because I bug it up. There we go. It's just little bits of water dribbling over the rock face there. I'll fix the bottom up later. Uh, we might have one just prancing his way down this little open bit here, spurting out and then just dribbling into the water there as well. Oh, how's that? The canvas fell off. And pretty much have him. Where are we? You see that? Yeah. And maybe another one. Oh, I'll try and keep it straight in. About there. Yeah, I'll get the bottom. A bit agitated from where the water goes in there. There we go. You can have, um, I don't know, now it's going to look, I don't really want to do, I don't want to overdo it, but you can have a bit of um, mist coming from the waterfall if you like. It's up to you. I'll just do it on this one here. Okay, now grabbing the, well, let's wash that brush properly. I'm grabbing the burnt umber, the darker colour there, and I just got to put the last element in this painting and it's done. So where are we? Let's, it's coming from there 
into the middle, boom. And get it, oh golly. <laughs> now do I fix that up? Get all that off your brush. There we go, let's start again, you dag. All right, skinny at the top and fatter at the bottom. I can hide that mistake I just thought of something. Then when I'm finished, this pitch will be the actual thumbnail. At the moment, it's just me as a thumbnail. Okay, got that done. Now use this paint. And make a palm. Just like that. I, I like using these little flat brushes and just cut them down like that, go along and cut them, pull them down. They, they make a simple, effective palm, especially for people that are beginning to paint. And after you've worked out how to do palms, you can pretty much make your own style up, but I'm just showing it this way. One more here. Now, when you've done that with your palms, please make them busy in the middle, just so they don't look undernourished and some pointier bits out here and there. Because <laughs> I've seen some people do some good palms of mine and then I've seen some that have done them, but they've just left out this busyness. And it's just a matter of going back and whacking it in. There we go, simple palm. I would like to fix the trunk up a bit. Now we'll just put some moonlight on that. So we're just picking up the white, dirty in the paint a little bit. And of course the moon's on that side. I'm gonna move yous over this side. Where are we? And we wanna just lightly, where are you? Just get this side of the trunk. It'll do. And then a little bit. Within the frongs of the palm. Where's my little, um, I've got a little liner here. What have we got there? Uh, welcome, but sorry I didn't know, never use that. All right, I'm going to, what colour? I'll just put a bit of, um, I'm just going to put my autograph on it. And just remember, all my paintings are for sale. There's a link in the description below, check it out. And they're all done through PayPal. There's a PayPal link there as well. All right, I'll put a nice little autograph on here. Get that a bit more wet, nice and wet so it'll run better. And I want to thank all my
patrons who support my video content on my channel here and thank everybody who comes along and watches my videos. Much appreciated. All right, we'll set a frame on this and see how it looks. Ah, should look all right. A frame maybe, eh? What do you reckon? <laughs> I hate doing my signatures. There you go, that don't look too shabby in a frame, does it? Got our moon sitting in the sky, we got some clouds down here, the sun's just going down. Got a bit of a, somewhere out there, waterfall, rocks, and there's a palm in the background as well, a bit of another artistic element within the painting. Hope you like that. Thank you Ian for a lovely evening. Cheers. Thank you Mary, Kalis, Sharon, Julie, Katie Coyne, gorgeous painting as ever. Thank you very much. All right, I'll um, pull back a bit so as we can come over here. Oh, where are you? There you go, my messy studio, eh? She's a mess. Oh, where's me tea? hope you like that video something easy to do and just remember you can do that okay it's very easy if you've got enough practice behind you if you find it's hard or some parts of it are hard just practice them that's what painting is all about it's not a matter of seeing a painting and having to do it straight away you've got to work yourself up to actually do a painting practicing procedures and things like that all right ah, so that's pretty much it um, Oh yeah, I've got to pass on the time at home. Okay, <laughs> once again, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody all right. All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya. Whew. say it's Uru from the Guru.